Number 10, Rogan Magneto. I feel like Magneto has a whole string of weird romances that I could just like talk about forever. Dating Magneto honestly just seems like it would be weird, intense, and kinda cool. Though I suppose the same could be said for his paramour here, Rogue. Rogue and Magneto had a brief almost romance in the main continuity when both found themselves stranded on the Savage Lands. But ultimately, it was their allegiances and philosophies that kept them apart. You'd think the age difference might also potentially be a reason as Magneto Magneto's daughter, Polaris, has always kind of seemed to have been depicted as being around Rogue's age, but nah, that never seems to come up. Granted, age isn't everything, but despite their great differences in terms of beliefs, there have been multiple universes where these two end up together, with a big part of the appeal likely being that Magneto, because of his powers, can actually physically touch Rogue, because his body is protected with a very tight magnetic shield. Number 9, Superman and Wonder Woman. Superman and Wonder Woman in theory sound like a great couple, but for many readers, these two coming together really shook up the status quo in a way that a lot of fans weren't actually, well, a huge fan of. Superman, after all, has long been shipped with Lois Lane, and seeing a reality where the two did not come together was heartbreaking. And then of course for Wonder Woman, she has Steve Trevor, although I feel like fans, myself included, weren't as heartbroken over the loss of that long-time relationship. I'm not a big Steve Trevor fan myself, so yeah. Booster Gold even expressed his own shock over Wonder Woman and Superman ending up together. For him, the couple was the end of the world. Literally. Booster Gold at one point has to travel back in the future in order to save his own future, but ends up being too late as it turns out what he was meant to stop was Superman and Wonder Woman getting together. But at this point, they already have. Too late. Bye Booster Gold as he fades away. So back to the future. I love it. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more weird romances or controversial romances lists, I know I do, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't already checked out our new channel, Top 10 Nerd Elite, head on over, hit subscribe, do it, it's so good. Number 8, Starfire and Red Hood. When Starfire joined the Outlaws, it was at a really weird time in her life, and a lot of that series in general was considered to be pretty weird for her character, just in terms of her personality, her characterization, and the general goings on. Starting right at the beginning with her flirtation and kiss with Jason Todd, aka Red Hood. Starfire had lost her memories and kissed Jason to relearn his language, having no memory of her previous and probably greatest comic book love, Dick Grayson, aka Nightwing, and therefore not really aware of the importance of the connection between Dick and Jason who were kind of like adopted brothers in terms of the Bat family, which makes that kiss kind of weird. What's more, it was also later implied that both Starfire and Jason Todd slept with each other before she moved on to another fellow outlaw member, Roy Harper, aka Arsenal. Which I'm not like a person that dislikes Starfire and Roy together, it's just the whole thing was kind of weird. Number 7, Marrow and Spider-Man. I feel like there have been multiple times in the comics where writers have tried to shape Marrow into something she inherently is not. And that is exactly what was going on here when she ended up in a relationship with Peter Parker. Sarah at this time didn't even really know who she was as her mind had basically been wiped by S.H.I.E.L.D. So she literally was being rewritten as a character. Literally. What's worse is that Peter wasn't just fellow super Spider-Man to her at this point, he was a guest lecturer and is currently a professor at her university. He also becomes aware later on that Sarah is actually Marrow, and what's worse is that her Sarah persona was built by S.H.I.E.L.D. out of implanted memories. So he also kind of knows this is going on. Granted, he didn't have a lot of time to do anything about that, but still. So the two also date briefly while Marrow isn't really fully herself. So this relationship wasn't just weird and out of place, but also felt pretty shady overall all for well, multiple reasons. At least it was oddly brief, and Marrow did end up returning to a more true version of herself by the end. Kind of reconciling both sides of herself, but yeah, Sarah was definitely a very intense opposite, I feel like, to Marrow. Number 6, Raven and Wally West. What makes that relationship that I mentioned in part 1 between Raven and Wallace West even more strange? Yep, it's time to talk about the relationship between Raven and the original Kid Flash, Wally West. Before Wally West was the Flash, he was Kid Flash and the new Teen Titans attempted to recruit him to their team. However, Wally wasn't interested in joining up, which caused Raven to cast a spell on him to change his mind. Raven basically made Wally fall in love with her with 
with this spell. What's even worse is that even after it was revealed that he had been manipulated by Raven, Wally still found himself unable to resist and still kind of had feelings for her. Raven herself also had feelings for Wally, but things only got weirder when her dark side was revealed to him. And she actually kind of almost ended up killing him? Needless to say, the two never formally ended up dating, but the attraction continued for a little while thereafter, as bizarre and terrifying as it was, with Wally both alternating between hating Raven and finding himself inexplicably drawn to her. Number 5 The Wasp and Magneto This one happened over on Battle World in the 1984 limited edition Marvel Super Heroes Secret Wars comic. Here Magneto made Janet his prisoner, but then set her free so that he could put some moves on her, because apparently he was into her. He saw Janet as being both beautiful and brilliant, and as such possibly someone who would be reasonable enough to consider becoming his ally. I would agree, I think Janet is both beautiful and brilliant. Their talks went well, but ultimately when Magneto started talking about the electricity between them, Janet was just not feeling it. He was like, I know you feel this thing, and she was like, your eyes are nice, I guess, I don't know. She told Magneto that she just wasn't really interested, firmly responding, no, 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 when he kissed her. But then despite her protests, she basically just decided to go along with it, which is also really weird. <laughs> Their intimate but brief dalliance not only felt pretty non-consensual, but then it was later revealed that Jan was only going along with it so that she could get intel and betray Magneto. Wow. And after he made a comb for her using his magnetic powers and sheer will. Number 4 Red Hood and Talia Al Ghul Well you might be thinking, wait a minute, are either of these characters really superheroes Amanda? I know a lot of Jason Todd fans out there who would tell you that Red Hood is one of the greatest superheroes there is. True, he does often skew more anti-hero in my opinion, but he still used his sometimes questionably moral approach to heroically help save the world and Gotham on multiple occasions, so I think we should count him. Talia, while definitely more villainous, has also sometimes been known to operate as a heroic ally to Batman as well. So yeah, she's definitely not a hero, but Jason Todd is, so it's fine. Talia actually operating as a heroic ally and love interest to Batman is actually a big part of what makes this relationship so weird actually. As Jason is kind of like an adopted son to Bruce and Talia sees Batman as her beloved, also being the mother of their child together, Damian Wayne. Granted, her and Batman's relationship honestly it deserves its own point as we've discussed before on previous weird romances list. Jason when he was returned from the dead had a brief thing with Talia which in a weird way is like an adopted son getting it on with his stepmom kind of. Yikes. I know there's going to be a lot of people in the comments. They're going to be like, Amanda, you know, there's this whole thing that tr that's a trend that I'm going to be like, look, okay, this is YouTube. We got to keep it clean for the people, for the children. Number three, She-Hulk and the Hulk. Another weird relationship, of course, is the relationship between fellow superheroes and cousins, She-Hulk, Jennifer Walters, and the Hulk, Bruce Banner. Of course, these two don't get together in the 616 universe, though there was a time when the Hulk did go into kind of like a hormonal, lust-filled rage and attempted, very roughly so, I might add, to get with She-Hulk. While well, She-Hulk managed to dodge that very disturbing and looming intimate relationship in 616, in the Old Man Logan universe of Earth 807128, it kind of became unavoidable for her. In this reality, She-Hulk and Hulk are implied to have become a couple that were the heads of an inbred family of Hulks. We also don't really know if She-Hulk was into this or not into this, and it was kind of against her will. While we don't know the fate of She-Hulk really at all, Bruce himself had become old and crazy due to the gamma radiation effect his sanity over time. It's implied that Bruce believed that Jennifer was the only person on the planet that he would be able to mate with due to their biological superpowered similarities. Number 2 Green Arrow and Shadow Shadow is the sometimes enemy and sometimes ally of Green Arrow, who in the current continuity was the lover of Oliver Queen's father, Robert. She's also the mother of Oliver's half-sister, Emiko, who ends up going on to become the apprentice of Green Arrow. However, before that continuity happened, we had the New Earth version of her character, who was similar in terms of her skills and reputation, but very different in terms of her relationships. Here, Shadow was the sometimes enemy and sometimes ally of Green Arrow, who at one point when he was pursuing her, mistook him for an enemy and fatally shot an arrow through his chest. Learning that it was Green Arrow that she had wounded, she actually nursed him back to health. But during this time, while he was recovering, both delirious and feverish, it's also heavily implied and later confirmed that she forced herself upon him. This was highly controversial, especially as there seemed to be no negative consequences for Shadow, who later gave birth to Robert, Oliver's son, whom Green Arrow wouldn't actually find out about until after. Shadow would also refuse to let Green Arrow have a say in their son's life. This whole thing is like 
Just a lot of problems. And honestly, it was made even more weird by the fact that now and then there seemed to be like a genuine love between Shadow and Green Arrow, making this relationship seem even more confusing and even more toxic. Number 1. Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch We've talked about it before on this channel, and apparently we need to talk about it again. As I saw it brought up a few times in the comments of our part 1 for this list. So here you go everyone, we're gonna talk about it. That's right, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver were a thing for a while in the comics. And no, I'm not just talking about when Elizabeth Olsen, who plays Wanda in the MCU, and Aaron Taylor Johnson, who played Pietro, were in the 2014 film Godzilla together and portrayed one another's romantic partners. This happened in canon in the comics, but in ultimately another universe. Get it? Ultimately? Get it? That's right, these two were hinted at and then fully revealed to be a couple in the ultimate universe of Earth 1610, despite also being siblings still in that universe. And if you're trying to give this relationship some kind of pass or some kind of benefit of the doubt, like a little one, wondering if the two perhaps, I don't know, somehow accidentally came together despite being siblings, like maybe they didn't know, this was no accident. They totally knew it was just a full on creepy brother sister romance. Number 10, Emma Frost and Cyclops. Don't get me wrong, I like this relationship overall in retrospect, but as this unfolded, it was pretty controversial. Not even just for fans reading along as this developed, but also in the Marvel Universe. Scott and Emma's relationship started as an affair, with him being with Jean at the time. Jean and Scott, however, did end up parting ways after Jean learned that Scott was having a psychic affair with Emma. Even weirder was that sometimes in their sexy mind affair, Emma would basically call cosplay as Jean, making herself look just like her for Scott. It was all pretty crazy. Emma and Jean would have a pretty intense fight regarding this whole affair, and even today, having buried the hatchet now, still have their moments of sassy animosity towards one another. But then they also have their moments of supporting one another. It's pretty cute. Number 9. Aunt May and J. Jonah Jameson This one was more shocking, I suppose, than controversial, but still. There is nothing wrong with Aunt May moving on and finding love, of course, but I don't think that many of us ever suspected that when she did move on, it would be with JJ. And even more shocking was when Peter at one point walked in on them together when they were in bed. Yikes. Also, what a way to find out that your Aunt May is dating someone. <laughs> That's a way to find that out. And you might be thinking, are either of these characters really heroes, Amanda? Should they really be on this list? Aunt May is definitely one of Peter's heroes, and in the alternate reality of Earth 3123, is a literal hero, with her taking Peter's place as a spider-like super, who goes by the name of Spider-Man. And so for that reason, I think we can count Aunt May today. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more controversial superhero romances, I have so many that I want to talk to you about. So please be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8. Roy Harper and Donna Troy and The Flash I mean, this was just a really weird time for Wally, and that is likely a big part of what made this love triangle romance so strange. What happened here was that Donna Troy and Wally West ended up together after the the main continuity was reset. Wally knew of his past life with Linda and his kids, but his kids were now seemingly gone, with Linda not remembering who he was or their marriage or relationship from the prior continuity. Donna was there to support Wally through this, and the two ended up together. Roy, however, had a crush on Donna and ended up heartbroken as a result. Ouch. And then shortly after, Wally West lost control during Heroes in Crisis and coincidentally, not even intentionally apparently, killed Roy Harper, among others. It's just a pretty strange scenario, I guess, and a really strange coincidence. Number 7. Madeline Pryor and Havoc While Maddie is definitely more of a villain, and Havoc was once a villain himself, currently in the comics, Havoc is a hero. So we're going to count him as a hero for this list, because yeah. And he's trying really hard. Ugh, Havoc. Everyone go read Hellions, go do it right now. Besides, he's also been a hero in the past as well. So as I said, he is the hero for this relationship point. What was controversial about these two? Well, just about everything. Madeline Pryor was initially married to Scott Summers, aka Cyclops, Alex's brother. Madeline was also still married, I believe, when this romance began, and then she ended up turning Havoc into kind of her thrall and her goblin king, or the very least her goblin consort. Remember those matching outfits? Oof, those themselves could be considered controversial to some, I think. Although I definitely love both of those outfits. I love that Havoc just had like a matching one to Madeline Pryor's like goblin queen outfit. It's just, it's pretty great. Number six, Raven and Wallace West. 
This is a pretty weird one, especially considering Wally West and Raven's history, which we're not gonna talk about in this list, but maybe if we do a part two, I'll talk about that almost romance. Raven and Wallace West were in a romantic relationship, which is pretty weird if you consider the age difference and also just the different stages of life that they're both in. While this relationship seems to have disappeared in current continuity, it is interesting to note that Wallace West is now a sort of student at Teen Titans Academy, while also being a member of one of the teams of the Teen Titans and a teenager. And Raven is back to being her all around normal, youthful, though no longer teenage self, with her being one of the faculty at the academy. That means that unless we make some important adjustments for either hero in terms of their ages, their relationship when it did happen was pretty controversial to say the least. I think there was supposed to be kind of an age tweak when that relationship happened, but yeah, if you don't know that, you'd just be like, what's going on? <laughs> Raven's dating a teenager. What's happening? Number five, Madeline Pryor and Cyclops. Madeline Pryor herself was a clone of Jean Grey, Scott's first love, created by Mr. Sinister, who is obsessed with the Summers family and with creating the perfect mutant, which Madeline was a part of that plot, but only if she had babies. So already we're not starting from a great place in terms of controversy and weirdness. There's also the fact that Scott himself only really seemed to be interested in Maddie because she so closely resembled Jean, which is also pretty weird. But it's even more strange that no one seemed to think of the two women's similarity as being suspicious and potentially the sign of a major problem, namely that Maddie was a clone of Jean. Needless to say, the relationship didn't end very well, with Jean returning from the seeming dead, having never never actually been dead but just in stasis, and Scott ditching his new wife and child to join the former X-Men team, now restyled as X-Factor. The first X-Factor team in fact. Number 4, Supergirl and Comet. Yep, Supergirl once dated her horse, but I guess it was kinda okay cause it turned out that he was a real boy in the end, well he became one or he became a man really maybe I should say, who when transformed into a human took the name of Bill Starr, Bronco Bill Starr. It turned out Comet's backstory was actually that he was once part man part horse and lived as a centaur. Even more odd, he also had a brief relationship with Lois Lane at one point, that's another thing that happened. While under his guise as Bill Starr, Comet would also work as a rodeo star and trick rider. I guess it takes being a horse to know how to really ride a horse? Something like that. Number three, Deathstroke and Terra. I mean, this is definitely a relationship reveal that will leave you reeling, confused, and likely kind of disgusted. Technically, neither Deathstroke or Terra are really considered mainstay heroes, though both have allied themselves with the good guys in the past, and Terra was, for a time, a seeming hero with the Teen Titans. Although part of her whole reveal as an undercover baddie, as well as part of her relationship with Beast, also led us to the revelation that she and Deathstroke were together. Now, let's keep in mind that Tara is supposed to be a teenager, whereas Slade Wilson is, well, I mean, definitely an older man for sure. His hair is white, he has multiple kids. Yeah, it's just not great. Even worse, there has been added context given to us for this relationship, which focuses heavily on the sexual attraction between these two. Just. Ick. You also have to consider the power dynamics here with Slade being older and also kind of Tara's boss and her undercover mission. So there's also that power dynamic that is like, just not, just not great. Number two, Jean Grey and Professor X. This has to be one of the most controversial romances of our time, at least in my mind. Maybe I just read too much X-Men, so that's why this is like really high up for me. Well, they didn't have a romantic relationship. They did have a relationship that had some really weird romantic undertones from pretty much day one. Professor X showed interest in Jean via his thought bubbles, but claimed he could never bring himself to let her know. Not because he was presumably much older and later established to be so, or because he was her teacher and professor at his own self-created school, but because he was the leader of the mutant team and was confined to a wheelchair. And how could he ever burden Jean with that? How could she ever accept that I'm confined to a wheelchair? Uh, it just reminds me of Scott. How could she ever accept that I can never take off my glasses. So yeah, just even on the surface, this, this whole thing is pretty controversial. Then of course there are all the other creepy moments from across the multiverse when it comes to the professor's feelings towards Jean. What I'm saying is, there's just more layers here than I really have time to peel back and discuss, but if you do want me to discuss them, you need to request a top 10 list on 
all of those creepy Professor X gene moments because there's a lot. Number 1. Donna Troy and Terry Long Donna Troy was only a teenager when she met and fell in love with Terry Long, with him initially being a history professor at the college she also attended. I don't think he was ever explicitly her teacher, but that one degree of separation isn't really enough to keep the ick out of this relationship. Terry perhaps was intended to be a younger professor as well, closer in age to Donna. At one point I think it's mentioned that he's at least 29, but then there is the fact that he had tenure and was already divorced with a possibly preteen daughter from his previous marriage, Jennifer, who we later see as a teenager. The fact that Terry Long started out as a side character who also looked a lot like Marv Wolfman did at the time, and ended up somehow marrying Donna and constantly fawning over her BFF model and fellow teen Starfire is all pretty wild to say the least when you're looking back. Number 10. Human Torch and Victorious Definitely one of the most awkward moments to have happened in recent comics, I think. During Fantastic Four issue 33 at Doom's wedding to the Latvian hero Victorious, it's revealed that she actually slept with one of his enemies. Yep, you guessed it, Human Torch, aka Johnny Storm. While this is the kind of behavior we've come to kind of expect from Johnny Storm, we wouldn't expect it to have messed up everything as badly as it did, or we wouldn't have expected it on this level, I guess. The truth initially was kept a secret, but finally, up at the altar, Victorious realized her mistake in keeping it from her husband to be, Victor, and decided that he actually should know. Yikes. I would not have wanted to be one of the wedding guests. Ugh, would have been rough. I mean, it was rough. It became a mess really quick. Number 9. Superman and Cheetah I know what you're probably thinking. When did this even happen? Well, it took place in a series that explores Superman's time on Earth when he was young and wild in his early 20s, before he settled into his job at the Daily Planet and ended up in love with Lois Lane. In issue number 3 of Superman American Alien, we learn that a young Clark Kent one time ended up on a yacht where Bruce Wayne's birthday was being celebrated. Of course, this was all a ruse for Bruce, who as a youngster traveled the world, learning and honing his skills as a combatant and detective, so he wasn't actually there for his birthday. In fact, he wasn't actually there for pretty much any of his birthdays. As such, Clark ends up meeting a young Barbara Minerva while on the yacht. Barbara knows it's not Bruce, but still decides to have a little fun time with this mysterious stranger, and the two end up sleeping together. Barbara even encourages Clark to embrace people mistaking him for the absent Bruce, and you know, just have a fun time. Which in the end, he does. If this strange romance bothers you however, don't worry. It's all in good fun, as American Alien is not considered a part of the main continuity. When I found out this happened, I was like, what? but it's not part of the main continuity. It's not within the main canon. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want more awkward romances, well boy, do I have some more stories to tell ya. So be sure to let us know you want that list by giving this video a thumbs up. Maybe next time we'll talk about some awkward villain romances? There are some of those too. Number 8. Stargirl and Shazam Stargirl and Shazam's relationship wasn't really awkward from their own perspective. The two heroes were both teenagers at the time, and Stargirl was aware that Shazam was really teenager Billy Batson. But it got really awkward when other heroes who didn't know of Shazam's true identity and age caught wind that the two were together. It became so awkward, in fact, that Shazam decided to break up with Courtney. Billy knew he couldn't make everyone understand without revealing his true identity, and so for that reason their relationship basically had to end. Which, yeah. That would be pretty awkward because Shazam definitely looks like an adult. So, yikes. Not good. Number 7. Storm and Doom Oh man, if ever there was an awkward romance, this is definitely one of them. Although that so often is what happens when we have romances or rather flirtations between heroes and villains. Recently in Sword issue number 7, we saw a callback to the history between Storm and Doom. They once had a sort of impromptu date. That date however did not end too well and she was trapped inside a body tight chrome casing, aggravating her intense claustrophobia. Storm would escape this chrome prison shortly and later would go on to heal from her claustrophobia over the coming years, but she wouldn't forget the slight that Doom had made against her. While initially she thought Doom a gentleman back then, today she is wiser. We see the topic come up again recently when Victor attempts to flirt with Aurora during a diplomatic dinner between the two, with Storm being the Queen of Mars slash Araco, and Doom being the ruler of Latveria. Storm quickly reminds Doom that she has not forgotten their past, to which he hastily apologizes and claims that her imprisonment was due to a 
a malfunctioning Doom bot who had acted on his behalf that evening years ago. I don't know, Doom. I don't think I'm buying it. Number six, Starfire and Jason Todd. Starfire and Jason Todd are a weird couple for, well, a number of reasons. Fortunately, they never really went full couple and really only had an implied relationship slash flirtation during their time together on the Outlaws team. Still, this pairing was super awkward considering that Starfire had no recollection of her time with Dick Grayson, but also was implied to be younger in the New 52 continuity with her being associated with the Teen Titans. Jason is, I believe, only a few years younger than Nightwing, which also makes everything kind of weird between Jason, Nightwing, and Starfire because it's kind of also perhaps unintentionally implied that she would be a lot younger than both of them. And yet, even in this continuity, I believe she and Dick were still almost married. That still happened, I think. There's also the whole thing between Starfire just seemingly being interested in sleeping with Jason, and then pretty much immediately after actually sleeping with Roy Harper, aka Arsenal. Number five, Archangel and Tuesday Bird. I don't know if you have read the Archangel one shot Phantom Wings, but if you haven't, you need to go do so. It is a treat. If you like weird things, you should read it. In this comic, Archangel ends up trapped in what appears to be some kind of pocket or nightmare dimension. In reality, it's being created and manipulated by a mutant who we learn is named Tuesday Bird. No, I'm not kidding, that's her name. Tuesday seems to possess the power to manipulate birds, and we learn that the trauma she suffered is actually causing them to repeatedly attack her. In the end, Warren and Tuesday end up with a weird attraction to one another where Tuesday simultaneously finds him both beautiful and disgusting due to him looking like a bird because he's got wings, you know? And Warren wrestles with his own issues regarding losing his wings, his transformance into Archangel, and his feelings about his new techno organic wings. At night, she secretly anoints his wings with oil while he sleeps. It's very weird, it's very creepy, it's very sensual. I don't want to spoil it for those who want to go back and revisit this one, but I'll just say it ends on an even weirder note if you can even imagine that. Number four, the Wasp and Havoc. That's right, at one point, two of the most complex Marvel family trees were intertwined via Janet Van Dyne and Alex Summers' relationship. These two got together during their shared time on the Avengers Unity Squad. Although they might seem like an unlikely couple, both of these two have some shared experiences in the sense that they both had some weird and awful relationships. So seeing them together kind of gave me hope that they could find something less weird and maybe more healthy together. Their relationship even resulted in the birth of Katie Summers, their daughter. Ready for the awkward part? Well, Kang ends up resetting the timeline to save the universe, which means that their time together and the birth of Katie basically gets wiped mostly clean, meaning Katie now never existed. Although sadly, both Janet and Alex do remember her existence. And Janet and Alex would also end up breaking up following Axis when Havoc ended up coincidentally shielded and therefore remained evil. Boo! Justice for Katie. Justice for this relationship. I love that Alex is like, it doesn't matter now because I'm evil, so I don't care that we were in a relationship because that's what evil people are like. Number three, Wallace West and Raven. Wallace West and Raven have to be one of the weirdest couples we got out of the new 52. Why? Well, because Wally West II was considered to be much younger than Raven. Some weird stuff went down when we got the new 52 as this was meant to be a complete reset of the continuity. At least, that was kind of the idea. In reality, the New 52 was more like a reshuffling of the continuity, with some things staying the same and others changing, which really only made everything more confusing and awkward for readers. One such bizarre change involved the Teen Titans. We got a fresh new Teen Titans, mostly, except some people aged up in New 52, joining just the Titans team, while others seemed to remain eternally young, staying with the Teen Titans. One such member who got left behind was Raven. She was part of the Teen Titans team, despite her being an original member in the New Earth continuity of the Teen Titans, so she should have been older. This confused people. She ended up in a relationship with Wally, which seemed pretty controversial considering that Raven should in theory be much older than Wallace West. This was a fresh continuity, but it was really hard for people to forget the past, like back when Raven actually almost ended up dating the original Wally West, Wallace's older cousin. Wally seems to be implied to be at least a decade older than Wallace West II. Then add in the fact that Raven has played the role of mentor and Wallace has played the role of student, and yeah, yeah, it gets really weird. 
Number two, Huskin Angel. I've talked about this one a few times and it doesn't get any less awkward the more that I do. In fact, I feel like every time we come back to it, it only gets more awkward for me. Husk is Paige Guthrie, the younger sibling of Sam Guthrie, aka Cannonball, and one of the siblings, I should say, as there are many Guthries out there. While Sam was introduced to us in the comics in 1982, Paige wouldn't appear until a couple years later, showing up in 1984. Angel, however, was first introduced in issue number one of the X Men in 1963 where he's initially implied to be of college age, but then of course it was later retconned that the original X-Men were teenagers when they joined up, more like high school age. Still, if Angel was around in the 60s as a teen, and Paige was introduced in the 80s as a teen, I think you see where I'm going with this. Initially, Paige dated Chamber for a while, but later she ended up as Angel's rebound following his breakup with Betsy. While also being seemingly much older than Paige, Warren would also sometimes treat her like she was a kid. And, and not really like his equal, which also made things even more awkward for readers. Also, there's the time that they were flying in the sky and some things happen. That was awkward. In front of Husk's mom, too, which is also awkward. Number one, Batwoman and Nocturna. Batwoman and Nocturna got together following Kate Kane's breakup with her then fiance, Maggie Sawyer. In fact, Nocturna in the comics was the one who caused that breakup. Behind the scenes of the narrative, there was a lot more going on, though, with Batwoman's marriage to her fiance being basically called off by DC, who didn't want to see it happen, arguing with the creative team behind the book, who did want to see it happen. So, Nocturna isn't just bad for Batwoman because she full on manipulated her into letting her feet off of her and dump Maggie and date her, but because she also represented a bigger issue that was going on at the time. The relationship wasn't only abusive to start, but was also abusive throughout from the start, with Natalia also behaving in a very controlling manner, consistently jealous of Maggie, even after Kate had broken off that engagement. It was just a big yikes of a relationship that also highlighted more awkward and awful problems going on behind the scenes. What do you think are some of the most awkward comic book romances, or almost romances? Which pairs would you like to see get together despite the fact that it might be kind of awkward to start? What awkward relationships do you wish were completely retconned out of existence? Ah, <sighs> Norman and Gwen. Thank goodness. Thank you. Thank you, comics gods. Number 10, Donna Troy and Terry Long. Donna Troy was known at this time as Wonder Woman's little sister. She is the hero known as Wonder Girl, who is spun as being an Amazon from Themyscira. Like Wonder Woman, but a teenager. Terry and Donna's relationship ended up becoming so serious that the two got married. And he was such a constant when it came to the Titans as a supporting character that even Starfire, Donna's BFF, ended up developing a little crush on him. And he on her to be honest, that was also pretty creepy. Donna and Terry ended up having a son together before Terry filed for divorce and a restraining order because Donna's superhero lifestyle was too dangerous for him. In the end, he and both his daughter from a previous marriage, oh yeah, he was married and divorced before he ended up with Donna, and he and Donna's son ended up dying in a car crash because, well, probably no one wants us to remember their weird and pretty awful relationship. Number nine, Black Hat and Wolverine. Wolverine and Black Hat Claws was a three-parter released in 2010. When Felicia Hardy first met with Wolverine, they were both kidnapped by Kraven the Hunter in order for him to, well, hunt them down on his beautiful tropical island. The ultimate game of manhunt, I'd say. Now, when the issue started, Black Hat and Wolverine weren't really a fan of each other, naturally. But when you're running and fighting for your life, emotions will probably be a little tender, a little exposed. But hey, nothing brings two people closer like beating up bad guys to a pulp. Or of course, long walks on the beach. Either one, either one's fine. So while it turned out that Kraven was actually a robot the whole time, spoilers, the real villain all along was Arcade and his girlfriend, White Rabbit. Bunch of fun games they're putting on there. They were behind all of this, and in the third part of the story, the cover alone suggests that the pair got much, much closer than the beginning of the tale. Black Hat steals a helicopter, Wolverine almost gets eaten by a fish, it's pretty tense. Later on, Black Hat admits that Wolverine was growing on her, and then a few days later, on a date, Black Hat also reminds Wolverine that she too can smell pheromones. And then we'll leave the rest up to your imagination. Number eight, Catwoman and Nightwing. 
Another one that I'm sure we'd rather forget. For those who aren't aware of this romance, it has definitely been shipped before by people, and the idea of Catwoman and Nightwing together has even made its way into the comics. Albeit it was mostly Selina doing the seducing here and Nightwing kind of just trying to make her stop, but definitely appearing at least a little tempted. I mean, this is Selina Kyle after all, who wouldn't be tempted, you know what I mean? Catwoman did some flirting and kissing with Nightwing while attempting to go after the same diamond that he was looking to protect. In the end, he figured out what she was really looking to do with their little dalliance, making sure that Nightwing decided to kiss and tell, thereby making Batman jealous. Um, what? Selena, ew! This whole thing is pretty gross, and especially as like some sort of weird jealousy bait. Not even just because of Catwoman's motivation in this story, but because Nightwing is like a son to Batman. So that's like Catwoman making out with her own stepson. Number seven, Supergirl and Comet. Of course, I have to talk about the time Supergirl fell in love with her pet horse. Of course, of course. Now, before you react, hear me out. It's a sapient horse with magical powers who at one point was actually a centaur in ancient Greece. So, you know, it's not too bad. It's still kind of bad. It's still a little bad. But dare I say it, he was actually quite handsome, I have to admit. He first appeared in Adventure Comics 293, and he became Supergirl's beloved pet, and then in Action Comics issue 301, he became a human being. I wish my dog turned into a human. I'd be like, hey man, what's up with the Q-tips? Why are you eating Q-tips every day? Yuck, stop. So just how did this happen? Well, a comet, mm -hmm, that was passing Earth, turned him into a human man appropriately named Bronco Bill. And if the name isn't selling you, he also became a rodeo star. I guess he has quite the experience in the field, literally speaking as well. Supergirl and rodeo star Bronco Bill fell in love and dated for some time until he, you know, turned back into an animal. At that point, they called it off. Look, I have so many questions, I'm just afraid to ask them. Number six, Tony Stark and Emma Frost. A lot of people have been confused about the potential future wedding that was made mention of in History of the Marvel Universe issue six between Tony Stark and Emma Frost. Or maybe you're not confused because maybe you didn't know about this, but this is a thing. This seems like one of the most random mashups to happen in comics, within the same universe at least. And yet some are speculating it could just be a marriage in name alone and more about a strong business partnership cemented through marriage. However, did you know that Tony and Emma actually have a romantic history? You might have missed the brief mentioning of it, but back in the 2006 Civil War in issue number three, it was alluded to that Tony and Emma have potentially been sleeping sleeping together on and off for years, when neither of them were otherwise attached. As weird as these two together sounds, I mean, it, it does kind of make sense. Both are powerful people with an appreciation for the finer things and who are both masters when it comes to business dealings. So they might have more in common than you think. And if you're wondering, yes, Scott does know about it apparently. Number five, Lois and Super Baby. Okay, being turned into a baby can be fun, definitely. In issue 147 of Batman, Bruce Wayne became a baby for a little and Robin didn't, so it was a good time. It was fun, the dynamic was funny. Just a little Batman using balloons to gain height, it's great. But sometimes it can get a little weird. For example, in Superman's girlfriend Lois Lane issue 59, we see more of this baby verse come to life and it's kind of serious and totally creepy. It starts out with Super Baby getting spanked, which is quite the intro. Well, in this comic, Super Baby is from an alternate reality and Superman is still a thing. He's still his own unit. So Lois brings home the baby version and Super Baby starts ripping photos apart, just being a pain in the ass. It's the 60s we're talking about, so Lois spanks him a lot. She's like rolling her wrist out in between. I mean, he's, he's the baby of steel, so it's gotta hurt a little bit. Things get even more weird than all of this when you realize the story is just about Lana and Lois fighting over who gets to marry the older Super Baby. This is one I hope I forget, but now you have to live with it as well. Number four, Jimmy Olsen and Mrs. Giz piddle -Sinez. Jimmy has really random, weird, and random luck with women. Sometimes he gets the most charming ladies and other times the most troublesome ones. Remember that time Harley Quinn pretended to be a love columnist who was interested in him because she actually wanted to kill him? 
that happened. He's had all sorts of super powered and alien girlfriends over the years, but one of the weirdest instances of romance for Jimmy happened in issue 100 of Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen. During an issue where we saw him married, or almost married, to Lucy Lane, Lois's sister. In fact, the wedding ended up not happening after all Jimmy's exes showed up, who still had a thing for Jimmy, including Miss Giz Piddlesinas from the Fifth Dimension. We'll just call her Miss Giz for short. Thank you, thank you past Amanda that wrote this. She is a trickster imp who hails from the same home as Mr. Mixie. She loved Jimmy so much, she sabotaged his Mary to Lucy, making it so that every time the pair kissed, Superman would be transformed into a mole. I'm not kidding, this also really happened. Something Jimmy later referred to as the mole effect. Wow, that's great, Jimmy. Miss Giz's undying and mischievous love for Jimmy actually succeeded in breaking up Lucy and Jimmy. Jimmy never gets any love in the end. Number three, Killer Croc and Orca. A fishy match made in heaven, that's for sure. I wouldn't want to double date with these two. I mean, the smell alone, I'll take the check. Let's get the hell out of here. In the Injustice Elseworld series, Killer Croc and Orca are married. Now, they must have met on Plenty of Fish or something. Now, that sounds like a pretty serious romance as it is, but in Injustice Volume 2, Issue 42, things get to the next level. Orca walks in, announces that she's pregnant, and the room goes, Silent, no one makes a peep. It's really, it's like there's a dull in the air. And then Killer Croc just slowly stands up, looks around for a little, and then tells the gang that he should probably head out now. He's not too pumped at the moment, but we definitely were. Number two, Rogue and the Sentry. This is a weird one that just randomly was retconned into existence, but what do you expect with the Sentry, one of the original heroes who himself was retconned into existence? During Sentry's funeral in Sentry Fallen Sun, after the death of both him and his wife Lindy, we see all the heroes gather to pay their respects. They all share their feelings and memories of Bob over a few beers and a water for Tony because, as Sentry taught him, he always has a choice. While reminiscing, Rogue reveals that Sentry was the only person who could touch her, though I'm pretty sure Magneto can kind of do that too, at least in some realities. Anyways, because Sentry was the only person who could touch her, they ended up having a deeply emotional and physical relationship. We don't really know what Lindy thought of this, or when exactly their relationship happened, or how that all works. This is all we get before Rogue runs off in tears, and I don't think it's ever really mentioned again, so that's kind of weird. And number one, Harley Quinn and Harley Quinn. Do you think if you met another version of yourself, you would like them? Would you fall in love? I had this conversation with my friend after watching Loki recently. I could date myself maybe, maybe for a week, and then I would go through my phone and be like, who's this guy? And I'm like, you tell me, bro. But when Harley Quinn met herself back in 2016's Harley's Little Black Book, she fell in love. It was great. From Amanda Condor and Jimmy Palmiotti, we get to see six issues where Harley teams up with other big names like Superman, Lobo, but then things get unique when Harley meets herself in one of these fun alternate universes, and it's great. They love each other, it's a ride. This whole issue was a good time, but it just honestly made me think if I could date myself. Amanda, could you date a clone of yourself? I would date me. I would date a variant of me. So mm. either like male, female me, but like, yeah. you know, has to be a little different. Yeah, definitely. Chris, yeah. what about you? So quick, he's like, yep, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we're both like, yes, we would totally yeah. do it. <laughs> I would do it, the same clone, same height too, we could dance together, oh, it'd be great. The curls, we get lost in each other's curls. It'd be beautiful. Kicking off the list at number 10, Thor and Jane Foster. The God of Thunder from Down Under and Jane Foster. Now, we see this relationship in the MCU, not that much though. See, it's said in the beginning of Thor Ragnarok that they broke up, so already this relationship in the MCU is pretty rocky. But now with Natalie Portman confirmed for Thor Love and Thunder next year, we may even go a bit darker with their romance. See, in the comics, their relationship began in the 60s when readers were introduced to Jane. She attended med school and was soon hired by Dr. Donald Blake, who is actually Thor in disguise. They're the king and queen of long distance. I mean, one lives on Earth, the other lives on Asgard, and at one point, Jane actually takes over and becomes the God of Thunder at a time where Thor was unworthy of wielding Mjolnir. Her time as Thor is pretty exciting, but the only catch was that her cancer would worsen every time she used her powers to save the day. So let's just hope we don't have to endure that on the big screen because the comics was hard enough. That was way too sad. And before we go on to number nine, if you guys could go ahead and toss this video a like because it really helps the channel out quite a bit. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching. Now back to some dark Marvel romances. Number 9, Crystal and the Human Torch. In Fantastic Four issue 45, Johnny Flame and Crystal meet and they hit it off. Naturally being, you know, Johnny saw her and immediately thought that she was something out of a fairy tale. 
how cute. So he approached her and of course this spooked her, causing this giant gust of wind, a quick storm, and then poof, she was gone, nowhere to be seen. Johnny is like, what the blazes was that? Why is she gone? How did this happen? Mysteries, mysteries. A few pages later, he runs into her again, but this time they show each other their superpowers, and that makes them instantly bond. The Fantastic Four needed a replacement temporarily while Sue was recovering from having their first child. So this inhuman, Crystal, was looking to fill that spot. Johnny and her were close. They dated after this, and then Crystal was front cover by the time Fantastic Four issue 81 rolled around. And then in Avengers issue 104, after a battle with a Sentinel, Quicksilver is hurt. The two of them ended up getting close as well, maybe a bit too close, because then she fell in love with Pietro. Sorry, Johnny, just not hot enough this time, it seems. Number eight. Crystal and Quicksilver. It happens, okay? Maybe you're with somebody, you meet another person, you just can't help it. Love is love. You gotta chase those feelings. It's not easy. So when it comes to Quicksilver, chasing doesn't take that long, being super fast at all. Crystal and Johnny broke up after she admitted to falling in love with Pietro, and then they got married. Now, this sounds like Johnny is the only one who got hurt here, but that's not the case for long. Crystal and Pietro's marriage was the first between an inhuman and a human in history. So it was kind of a big deal. They ended up having a daughter who surprisingly was born without any powers and they named her Luna after the world that she was born on. Quicksilver believed that he had the right to subject the child to the Terrigen Mist, but Crystal wanted her to grow up normal. So their marriage now began to spiral. Quicksilver's temper was ruining things and Crystal had an affair with another man named Norm Webster. She told Quicksilver while she was unwell and half asleep, it was wild. Funny enough, Norm was actually the same guy who sold the Vision and Scarlet Witch their home in Vision and Scarlet Witch issue one, volume two. Once Norman found out that Crystal was married, he was like, nah, I'm out of here. I'm bouncing, see ya. Crystal then left Quicksilver with Luna and then returned to the Fantastic Four, searching for that relationship with Johnny again. What a mess. What an absolute mess. Number seven. Thor and Lady Sif. This next one, okay, I think this will be a central plot for the next Thor movie, perhaps. When it comes to Norse mythology, Thor's wife is Lady Sif. In the comics, it's not that easy. See, they were on and off for a while, and we see glimpses of this in the MCU. With Lady Sif's absence in Ragnarok, fans can expect her to return into Thor's life, kind of like Bo Peep in Toy Story 4. She's still around, she's just not around here right now, per se. In Journey Into Mystery, issue 102, Thor had fallen in love with Lady Sif, so much so that when Sif had been kidnapped by storm giants and ended up as a prisoner of Hela, Thor straight up offered his own life in order to save hers. And Hela was so impressed that she let them both go. She was like, wow, that's go, go make out, go do something, that's great, you guys are great. And then in Thor 236, Lady Sif sacrificed her own life in order to save James. Now, while this may seem like a rather dark plot, I'm sure we'll get some sort of version in it in the next Thor movie. Maybe the reality gem has caused some life-altering effects to Jane, and Lady Sif can somehow be the only one to save her at the end of the movie. Number six, Black Widow and Bruce Banner. Remember in Age of Ultron when Black Widow was the key to calming Bruce Banner down? They were in love, probably. I mean, I think. Maybe? I mean, they were flirting at the beginning of Age of Ultron. Even Steve Rogers was like, hey, you're not breaking any bylaws, go for it. I insist. And then cut to later in the movie, they're at Clint's secret family farmhouse talking about running away together. And then after all this time, Bruce finally returns to Earth in Infinity War, and he says hi to Nat, and then she says hi back, and that's kind of it. Well, according to Infinity War co-screenwriter Stephen McFeely, he said they certainly tried to, but it became very clear that if the scene was just not the A-plot of the movie, they couldn't survive Infinity War. He said that thing has to be on rails just to get to the finish line. He said you couldn't wrap up loose threads just because you wanted to. That's a valid point, but when Natasha sacrifices her life in order to allow Hawkeye to get the Soul Stone, Banner just like throws a bench. I mean, I was seriously expecting more heartbreak from him. I was actually expecting him to kind of hulk out a bit, but no, he wears he wears cardigans now, so he's all good. Number five, Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy. This one left average moviegoers stunned in theaters when The Amazing Spider-Man 2 hit the big screen. We see the famous death of Gwen Stacy from the comics on the screen, and it's so sad. God, it's so sad. This horrible moment comes from issue 121 of The Amazing Spider-Man, where the Green Goblin drops her off the Brooklyn Bridge, and although Peter has his trusty webs, Sometimes the angle just doesn't cut it, and then he caught her the wrong way, and Gwen Stacy's neck ended up snapping from the momentum. Eagle Eye fans could spot the clock tower in Amazing Spider-Man 2 striking 1210, which references that of issue 121. Number four, Black Panther and Monica Lynn. Monica first appeared in comics back in Avengers issue 73. She grew up in Georgia, but moved to New York, where she then met Black Panther. T'Challa saved Lynn from the Sons of the Serpent, and usually when their saving involved, 
loving comes after. They hit it off, so much so that Monica actually lived in Wakanda with her prince as well. In Black Panther, Panther's Prey issue four, he calls off the engagement without giving an explanation why. But then in Black Panther volume four, issue 16, Monica Lynn is seen performing. She's a great singer in the comics, and she sings a sad love song to a sold out crowd in Washington, DC. Through her lyrics, she reflects on her heartbreak and the fact that T'Challa is marrying someone else. He actually ends up marrying Storm. Wow, what an artist. She turns her pain into passion. She's like Adele, but better. Number three, Jean Grey and Scott Summers. Cyclops and Jean Grey became close in the school for gifted youngsters after Scott was given a visor made of ruby quartz. He could then control his powers and shortly became the deputy leader of the X-Men and then of course fell in love with his teammate, the wonderful Jean Grey. Sounds like a dream when it comes to the gifted youngsters, no? I mean, they're super close and of course their romance was a fan favorite. She's in his head as well. I mean that in a literal sense. Jean created a psychic link between them both, giving them the ability to read each other's minds. Guys, just a pause right there. Would you ever want that with your significant other? Would you ever want like your brains to be linked and you know what each other's thinking about? I mean, that's trust. That's a lot of trust. I can't tell if I would hate that or love that. They went strong until Jean sacrificed herself to save everybody from the Dark Phoenix in X-Men 137. And Scott would surely take his time moving on until he married Madeline Pryor, of course. Number two, Vision and Scarlet Witch. Perhaps one of the most interesting couples in the MCU, and especially after the events of WandaVision have just unfolded last week, it's fair to say that this deserves a spot on the list as well. He's an android and she's a witch and they go through a lot together. So Vision and Wanda tied the knot back in 1974 and they've even welcomed twins at one point. Catch was those twins of Wanda and Visions came out of nowhere and it was then revealed that their souls were actually part of Mephisto, which was actually a running theory in WandaVision for a while, but that might've been too dark for the show, which makes sense. So these twins have been in the comics to grow up to become Wiccan in speed. And in the MCU, Wanda and Vision's romance is super fun to watch for the most part. I mean, they joke and bond over paprika, they watch sitcoms, and they have incredibly deep conversations about love. They both got their abilities from the same Infinity Stone in the MCU, so they're literally connected in a way. In the finale of WandaVision, she says goodbye yet again to her love, and this time it's on their terms. Now with the other white Vision being free, and he's basically another version of that same Vision, Odds are it's going to be even more heartbreaking once Wanda leans into this villain role in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, and they yet again have to say goodbye for like the fourth time. I've lost count at this point. And finally, number one, Tony Stark and Pepper Potts. When it comes to character arcs in the MCU, Endgame did a really good job of wrapping storylines up for most of our characters. I mean, Black Widow for sure could have used a funeral, but I mean, her solo movie is coming up, so maybe we'll see more of that then. But when it comes to Tony Stark and Pepper Potts, she used to work for him, answering his calls, watching him tinker around in the basement, building Mark II. They had their ups and downs throughout the years, like in Civil War, Tony and Pepper were separated. And then at the end of Homecoming, Tony pops out an engagement ring, and then things come to a tragic end, of course, when Tony sacrifices his life in order to wipe out Thanos and his army. Of course, repeating the same words that kicked off this entire thing in the first place, those being, I am Iron Man. So now with Pepper being more than capable of suiting up herself and helping out in the battle, could we see more of her in the MCU, perhaps in her Iron Man suit? Probably not, it doesn't seem like we will, but hopefully, Time will tell. Fingers crossed.